Welcome to lesson 3.1. We're starting off our level three with such a great lesson. It's called similarity of triangles. Now, we're dropping off from congruent triangles because congruent triangles have all the same angles and all the same sides. Similar triangles, well, it's similar to that, <laughs> but it's not the same because similar triangles are definitely have a lot of similarity to them. If you see these two triangles that we're looking at, Rob and Fat. Yes, that's my friend Rob, and yes, he is fat. Um, they look the same, right? But one's just bigger than the other. So there are some properties of similar triangles that are kind of like congruent triangles where there are some things that are the same, but obviously they're not exactly the same. They're just similar. See, not exactly the same, similar. Okay, well, let's get into it. So there's two main properties that you need to know about similar triangles. These are the two big ones, okay? The first one is this. If similar triangles are similar, we know one, corresponding angles are congruent. All right, that is the first big prop we know. We know in similar triangles, the corresponding angles are all congruent, okay? And what are corresponding angles? That's the angles that match onto each other. So for example, R matches onto F. Remember this, uh, that the order of these letters matter? So we know R is going to be congruent to F. They are exactly the same if these two triangles are similar. All right, now let's write that out. Angle R is gonna be congruent to angle F. We also know that O is congruent to A, right? Those correspond to each other. So angle O is congruent to angle A. And then finally, we have our last one. We have B is congruent to T. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So we know angle B is congruent to angle T. So, big fact number one. You gotta remember this. If two triangles are similar, the corresponding angles are congruent. So all of these angles are the same and they match up to each other. And remember, don't forget the order of these letters matters. Now, while we're over here, I might as well just uh, show, point this out. This little sign right here, that little squiggly line, that means similar. Okay, that little line means similar. So when I see triangle ROB and that squiggly line and then triangle FAT, that's telling me that they're similar. Now, the second big fact we need to know is that the ratios of the corresponding ding sides are the same. The ratios of the corresponding sides are the same, okay? So let's also just let's get this out of here, all right? Take that out, all right? And I'll show you these ratios, all right? So what I mean by that is this. I mean the ratio of RO to FA, okay? Let's look at that first. So RO is right here, FA. So that ratio is 10 to 5, which reduces to 2, is going to be the same as all the other ratios we look at of the other corresponding sides. So OB to AT. So here's OB, here's AT. If I look at this ratio, 12 to six, that is also two. And then if we look at our last ratio, RB to FT, right here to right here, that's eight to four, the ratio is two. So these are the two big facts about uh, similar triangles that you need to know. The, rate, the corresponding angles are congruent, all right? So all these angles are congruent, and the ratios of the corresponding sides are the same. So you're always gonna have the same ratio. So 10 to five, eight to four, six, 12 to six, that is a ratio of two. And just to tell you what wouldn't work, right? It couldn't look like this. I couldn't have, um, let's just take this guy out. Let's say this was 18. That wouldn't work because 10 to five, that's a ratio of two. Eight to four has a ratio of two. 18 to six has a ratio of three. That is not the same ratio. So those triangles wouldn't be similar. So all the ratios always have to be the same. They have to have that same ratio. So everything here grows by two and it has to be the same for each corresponding side. All right, that's the big facts. Let's get into some problems, okay? So number one, let's just get used to matching up the angle, the corresponding angles and corresponding sides. This one tells us that triangle CAT is similar to triangle DOG. State which angles are congruent and the ratio of the corresponding sides. All right, so this is just getting used to, can you match up the angles correctly and can you match up the corresponding sides? It's just always knowing, this is so important for similar triangles, always knowing what corresponds to each other, okay? So 
Which angles are congruent? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We just have to match up our letters. So C is congruent to D. So we can write that here. C is congruent to D. We know A is congruent to O. A is congruent to O. And we know T is congruent to G. And that's right here. Angles are pretty easy, right? Now let's go back onto the sides. I like doing the sides now. That's, that's kind of the, the really tougher one. So let's get that going. Um, so let's start with uh, just looking at the letters. So I gotta find out which sides correspond to each other. I don't wanna do it visually. I wanna use the letters as my guide. So this first one is CA corresponds to DO. So I got CA here and I got DO here, all right? And so that's 10 to four. Now I suggest either putting this in the calculator or reducing your fraction to see what the ratio is here. Let's just do it the calculator way. You get 2.5, okay? Which is also five halves, okay? Either one works. You can use a decimal or a fraction. Our next corresponding sides is AT and OG, all right? And that's 15 to six. And if you do 15 divided by six in the calculator, you get 2.5, which is also equal to five over two. And then finally, we're gonna have CT to DG. So here's CT and here's DG. And we get 25 to 10. That's also 2.5, all right? So my ratios are all the same. My angles are, my corresponding angles are congruent. Things are looking good for this one. Now I just wanna be clear, just take a quick look here. Notice how I'm always putting the bigger triangle number on top. I just like doing that as a convention. I think it's easier to solve these problems if you always put the bigger triangle on the top of the ratio. You don't have to do it that way, but I recommend it highly. Okay, so let's just do three problems where we're gonna solve some uh, the missing sides for some triangles, and then we are good. So let's move on. Now we can use this fact that the ratios are all the si same, all right, to figure out what different side lengths are. And I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna set up proportions here. So let's look at this question here. Triangle BIG is similar to triangle LUV, okay? These two triangles are similar. What is the length of UV? Well, the way you do it is this. First, you're gonna do this. You're gonna put an X where you wanna solve it. So we wanna find out what UV is. Let's put an X there. Now, what we're going to do is set up a ratio, all right? The ratio is this. We're gonna find a pair of matching side lengths. So if you see here, I have BG and LV, which correspond to each other. If you wanna check it, BG is the first and last. LV is the first and last. So those two correspond to each other. I'm gonna set my ratio. That's 10 is to five, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is set up my next ratio, and I'm gonna say, what does X correspond to? All right, that's UV. And UV corresponds to IG. All right? Now, I'm gonna set up my next ratio. So since IG and UV correspond, and once again, you can check that by looking at the order of the letters, IG and UV, let's set up our ratio. So that's gonna be 14, all right, over X, all right? And now that we set up our ratio, we can just cross multiply to solve. So we cross multiply, bing, bang, we get 10X is equal to 70, divide both sides by 10, and we get X is equal to seven. All right, so to answer our question, UV, the length of that is seven. Now I wanna make a big important point here. Whenever you're setting up your ratios, all right, the same triangle has to go on top and the same triangle needs to go on the bottom. To show you what I mean is this. On the top, we both used our bigger triangle, right? 10 and 14 were from the big triangle. And on the bottom, we put the small triangle. Now, do you always have to put big on top and small on the bottom? No, we'll do it the other way next time, but the same ones have to go on top. So it has to be big, big on top and small, small on the bottom. Or you can do small, small, big, big, but they always have to be the same, okay? So big, big on top, small, small on bottom. Let's try the next one, all right? Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Find the length of CB if AC is 12, DF is nine, and FE is 14. So. We know the triangles are similar because that's what that little symbol means. That means similar. And then we have all these side lengths. Well, we're trying to find C what CB is. So let's put an X there. We always put an X for what we want to find. And we know that AC is 12. 
df is 9 and fe is 14. Okay? So what we're going to do is set up a ratio to solve for x. So let's find a pair of corresponding sides. I know that AC, all right, this length right here, all right, and it's kind of hard to see what it corresponds to here, right? It's kind of hard to figure that out. Does this correspond to 9 or 14? I can't really tell. Well, if you look here, we could, if A and C are the first and last le letter, we could do that here too. That's D and F, okay? So AC corresponds to DF. So let's set up that ratio. Um, this time I'm going to do the smaller triangle on top. So that's 9 over 12, okay? So I put the small on top, and then on here I put the big triangle, okay? So my next ratio is going to be, well, 14 and X. So that's FE and BC. See how those correspond? Those are our corresponding sides. So let's set up the same ratio. Now remember, we're putting our smaller triangle on top, so we're going to put 14 on the top because that's from our smaller triangle and smaller triangles going on top, and x on the bottom. All right, we just cross multiply these guys, and we get 9x is equal to, whoo, I can do this in my head, 168, divide both sides by 9, and x is equal to, oh man, I can't do that in my head. Um, hold on, I'll take out my calculator, which is 18.666, and that goes on forever, so we'll just put the bar, okay? Is it a decimal? Yes. Am I cool with that? Yeah, I can handle decimals. We're in 10th grade now. We're okay with it. So CB is equal to 18.6666 bar. Okay. So the big thing is, I'm going to tell you, the hardest thing here is figuring out how to set up your ratios. And remember, the same triangle always has to either go on the top and bottom. So the small triangle always went on the top here, and the big triangle went on the bottom. It doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you're consistent, okay? You also have to figure out the corresponding angle, the sides. And if you do that, you're going to be good money in this lesson. Now, here's the last one. And this one I'm making a huge important point out of, right? I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in this example, we know that triangle XWV, XWV, which is the smaller triangle, is similar to XYZ, which is the bigger triangle, okay? The next information it gives us is that XW is 4, WY is 8, and WV is 5. All right? It's asking us for the length of YZ. Now, to solve this question, I'm going to tell you this. Whenever you have two triangles that are on top of each other, you need to redraw it separately. I'm not kidding with you. I want to see this every time you're doing it. Okay? You need to separate these triangles. So you're going to separate the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. You're going to redraw it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Don't mess around with this. The smaller triangle is WXV and the bigger triangle is YXZ. Okay? I'm just using these letters here. Okay? Now the next part is you got to refill in what the lengths of everything is. So in this one XW is 4, WV is 5. All right? YZ is X. It's what we're looking for. And if you look over here, we want to find the length of xy, which is this whole length. So what's the length of this whole thing? Well, you guessed it. You've got to add these two parts together, because if this is 4 and this is 8, we're going to add them together to get 12, okay, to get the whole length. We had to add those together. And now we can set up our ratios. So in this one, if I'm solving for x, I know that xy corresponds to xw, all right, if you see that x, y corresponds to x, w. So that's 12 is to 4. So I'm putting my bigger triangle on top. All right. And it might help if you label. I'm putting my big on top. That's a little note to yourself. And I'm putting the smaller triangle on the bottom. Okay. And then my next set of corresponding sides is y, z and w, v. y, z and w, v. Okay. So the bigger triangle goes on top, x is from the bigger triangle, and the smaller triangle is 5. Now we just cross multiply to solve, 12, all right, you might remember this, 12 times 5 is 60, 4 times x is 4x, all right, to solve this we're going to just divide both sides by 4, 
and we get x is equal to 15. So, if it asks us what yz is, that is 15. yz is equal to 15. Bing, bang, boom. Now, that makes sense too, right? I just want to clarify, these answers should always make sense. You always want to make sure at the end that you're like, that these answers are like not coming out of nowhere. If you look at the ratio of 4 to 12, you know that's three times as big, right? So you could say that if this is 5, I know it's going to be three times as big here, so it has to be 15, right? 4 to 12 is three times as big, 5 to 15 is three times as big. The ratios will always be the same, just like in a dilation. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. Remember, never, ever, ever pick your nose and eat it in front of anyone because that's gross, but you can do it alone. Beans.